downtown Saginaw with Carol Leckel and Sue Smith, the infamous Sue Smith. Oh. You may know her as <laughs> Listen to the Misses. But she's on the board of the Reed program. And we're here today to just talk. I am so curious about what Reed really does. So Carol Leckel, well, talk we, to me. We are so glad that you're here um, today and I'd be happy to talk to you about our program. I know you're somewhat familiar, but maybe some of the viewers are not. I've been um, to, um, what's it called at the zoo? That's a big day. You're at the zoo, drop oh, everything and read. Drop everything and read. Kids just flock to that. That's, That's a right. big event That's for you. That's right. We actually do two public events, that event, and then we do another one in March called Books for Breakfast, what's so Pancakes and Books. Ah. And we hold that at the Hunger Solution Center in March to celebrate National Reading Month. Uh, but really the premise of our program is recruiting individuals to become volunteers so that they can help children improve their reading skills and discover the joy of reading. How old does that pro... Okay, we want children to learn how to read. When do we start? We actually target um, first, second, and third graders. That's really our target. We do work with some fourth and fifth graders, some older students. But as everyone knows, research shows that if we can get children to be reading by third grade, Chances are the rest of the years are going to they're going to be on level with their reading. So they won't we want we don't want them to fall through the cracks. That's right. And get frustrated. That's right. And you know, learning to read, um, you know, it's not like math, and I don't mean to offend any of the mathematicians out there, but it's not like reading is two plus two equals four. Learning to read is such a complex puzzle. There are so many puzzle pieces that have to come to the table. But what's really important with reading is teachers teach in the classroom the formal instruction. And then just like riding a bike or playing a musical instrument or playing a sport, the more you practice, the better you get at it. Right. And of course, the better you get at it, the more you're going to enjoy it. The more you enjoy it, the more you're going to practice. Right. So some kids just need to be motivated with one-on-one -on -one assistance. And again, I'm sure everybody knows there's not a lot of one-on-one -on -one time in the classroom now. Right. You know, so our program recruits volunteers so that we help students one-on-one -on -one, um, with practicing their reading skills and of course motivating them to be able to read books that aren't textbooks because you know quite frankly you know it's not fun always reading that textbook so how do you get kids to read pleasure books um, and actually research shows if you read pleasure books they um, children actually enjoy reading more they score better on tests and they're engaged more in their community that's mm -hmm. how the whole responsibility of your own community um, happens sometimes because they've ventured into reading and discovered that that joy and what, what reading brings to their lives. So what's an ideal volunteer? Do kids read to kids? Is that ideal? We actually, it's, we have our famous White Pine Reading Buddies program where we have seventh graders who are mentors and it's part of their classroom curriculum. So they're doing it during school time hours, but it's literally part of their curriculum that they are becoming volunteers and working with kindergartners at several of the township schools. Mm -hmm. So a very unique program. We're training young students to become leaders in themselves. Little do they know they're also practicing their reading. Sure. And then again, they're, they're, they're peers to the seventh graders. So a great, great program. Now I know, so you're involved with West Court and mm -hmm. um, Senior citizens right. very often. Do senior citizens, are they a good volunteer base? Oh, we have, I've had some of our residents who have been volunteers and they loved it. Sure, they the grandma, grandpa it. figure. Oh my gosh, well they've got grandkids that are living across the country. Here's a chance to mentor some of these kids locally. Mm -hmm. And just the experience they've had. How many years did Bob Lyon have in? Oh gosh. Had the most wonderful volunteer who made it into his 90s and he volunteered for years. For so me. how does that work with senior citizens? Do they come to the students or do the students come to like a senior citizen center? Typically the, the volunteers are all going to the school or an after school program. We have a couple evening programs, not very many now, but mostly our programs are, to be honest with you, during daytime. So if somebody wants to volunteer, once they fill out the application, a background check, we provide a one-hour training session. And really the training session is just to give you all these ideas, things to do to make it fun and exciting for kids. Um, then they're actually placed at a school. They get assigned very specific students that they're going to work with. So after the first week they get there, they learn all where to park, and you know, all those kinds of details, and they're, who their students are. Then it's just a matter of every week they come in, they sign in, and then they work with their students. And typically during the school day, the students are pulled out of the classroom for about 20 minutes each. So you may work with three different students. So so if a, an older person wanted to volunteer, and I say older, 
anybody that has time during the day once a week. Right, right. And, and actually I'm going to talk, you know, our commitment is one hour, one day a week. And um, typically it's from October through May, but we do recruit volunteers all year long because our program, we find that once we get people started, oh my gosh, they like it so much that they're going to come back the next year. We have so many returning volunteers. The other thing, and I will tell you that we have more and more working people who are volunteering. Yeah. So they volunteer on their lunch hour or they find a partner and they and their partner mentor the same children. So one week, one of the persons goes, the next week, the other partner goes. If, and I even have a partner, so I might say, I can't go this week, so I'll go two weeks in a row, and then um, the partner will go the other two weeks in a row. So you make a commitment, though. Right, you make right, a commitment right. that you're going to be part of the program, and obviously if you have a partner, you're doing really twice a month or every other week. Or I have to laugh because we have snowbirds that go away for the winter, so they get a mm -hmm. sub, and then when the snowbird comes back, they fight over whose turn it is, really, right. and that they, you know, you were just subbing. But you're so responsible kind of to that child. Right. In the business community, I will tell you, we have more and more businesses because, again, everybody's um, having, you know, the economic, everybody's asking for money. This is really, we're asking for people's time, mm -hmm. and this is an easy way for people to get involved because typically, again, the employees doing on their lunch hour, maybe they give them an extra 20 minutes for travel time. Um, businesses are really becoming very supportive of this. Um, and, you know, most people say a lot of us sit at our desk and eat lunch, you know. We, I can leave for, you know, one day Absolutely. a week or every other week, you know. And it's just a great way to get involved with really a very minimal amount of time. Well, and think about people who are just retired and going, okay, what am I going to do now? Mm -hmm. I mean, what a great thing to jump or into. Or parents, right? your children, the empty nest. Yes, right. exactly. You know, right. okay, parents. Or, oh, yeah. you know, mothers, right. I, I hear this often at the coffee shop. Oh, I just don't know what yeah. to do. I've got this empty yeah. nest. Well, hello. I know. Here's Call something Carol. you can do. Yep. Yeah. Call me. Again. Call <laughs> Reed. What's the number here? 755-8402. 755-8402. And this is a number, this is a gift that you're giving. That's a lifetime Absolutely. gift that you give to these children. And talk about gifts. And we also have a website. We have a website, yes. and actually soon we're going to have a new website, so Ooh. we'll be launching a new mm -hmm. site soon. But the actual web address is um, www.readinsaginaw.org. So readinsaginaw.org. But we were talking about gifts. Yes. I know that the, the ladies at, um, help me. Antique Warehouse. Okay, yes. What's the book? Ant the, the Children's Book Company. Children's Book Company. Yes. Is so, they yes. so love Reed. Yes. And I think you have a book fair? We do, coming up. And, oh my gosh, it's so fun. And it's going to be Thursday, December 8th this year. And it goes from 10 till 8 at the Antique Warehouse. So there's different authors there selling books. You they do get, such oh, a fabulous oh, job. Come and do your Christmas shopping. Come Absolutely. and check out stuff. And proceeds and then, help yeah. help read Actually, by proceeds. Um, we use um, we have uh, what we call a volunteer lending library, just like the library where we have very specific books. We even brought some along. These are kind of fun books. We both read. The volunteer reads kind of the page that has lots of words, and here's the beginning oh, reader. Yeah. So um, the proceeds help us to buy specialized books for our, our volunteers to use. So it's always a fun day. And you know, Christmas, everybody um, on your Christmas list should have a book because presents as books are, you the can best. open them again and again and again. You just there don't you open go. them once. You there open you them go. many times. And so. share them with other right. people in the family. Right. Well, I just wanted those in TV land, Channel 98, <laughs> <laughs> to know more about Reed. I, it's very important to me. My son was always a reader. I didn't have to awesome. beg or, and it, it has boded well, boded. Hmm, that's probably what I just said. <laughs> it's, it's new in that Lakiro dictionary. It's been good for like him God, to you got, read. Yeah, yes. yeah, it's, it's yeah. been very, yes. very uh, yeah. done him well to read, but um, and that is your, your son to probably, you encouraged him to read and he yeah. found something he was very interested in. Mm -hmm. A lot of times children really have not found the the book or the kind of the topic or the genre of you know what they enjoy because something to some, give this yeah. up for <laughs> and some of them you know quite frankly only are surrounded by their textbooks we know that that's not fun to read so right. you know finding and I, I you know again my sons as well 
Um, when Harry Potter books came out, oh my goodness, high school students, the entire mm -hmm. swim team was reading the Harry Potter book, right. which I thought was so cool. So it's just capturing that interest and in, in hoping that you know children will read for a lifetime. You know, and having somebody to care about them and pay attention right. and well, love and you know, them up. Really, you know what right. we assume? We assume they have books at home to read too, and that's one thing Carol does a great job with with the the Deer Day and with the books for breakfast. They take a book home from those exactly. events, from those events, and they'll have something to read at home too. Yeah. So that's what's a great thing about this program too. So there you have it, Channel 98 listeners and watchers. Get out there, call, read. What was the number again? 755-8402. We're counting on you to get out there and volunteer and build that base for read. This is your county and our kids need to read. That's it. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. See you again on Channel 98.